Welcome to GoVM Lab, India's first job-ready VMware learning platform where professionals meet experts to revolutionize their VMware careers. In this lecture, we are going to talk about what are the important log files you should be considering it whenever we are troubleshooting these specific issues. So we'll be focusing on all of those log files and then we'll be understanding uh, very common issues like ESXi reboot issues and what are the relevant log files you should be looking at it. And then we'll be also discussing about the host disconnect issue, which are very common issues. What do we see in the production environment? So now, if you look at that, the first slide says that location of vCenter server logs. So if you look at this particular slide, it says that where log VMware. So this is the folder you should be looking at it whenever you are trying to debug anything which is specific to your vCenter server appliance. Okay, now subdirectories. So as you know that vCenter server has a bunch of services. So all of those services or the other vCenter server components, they get present or they get those services are, or those log informations are present under subdirectories inside this folder. So if you look at that in this particular folder, we are into this folder where log VMware. Now, when you go to where log VMware, you will be finding bunch of folders right there, right? So one of the key log file or log folder you should be looking at it is your VPXD. If you have gone through the our deep dive lectures, you might have understood that VPXD is one of the, the key service of your vCenter server. And this VPXD is should be your starting point whenever you are trying to debug any issues which are very specific to your vCenter server. So that has to be a, a, a very fast log you will you will always be looking into it now the next folder if you do see that it talks about the vpxd services actually so when you look at this particular vpxd services that's where we have this vpxd.svcs so this is all about your vcenter server component so if you go further into this particular directory you will be finding all of the other vcenter server components and their relevant logs now if you do see that it also says that the first boot dot log are located in where log first boot so I'm sure when you are installing vCenter server appliance, sometimes you might have seen those issues during the installation itself. So when we say installation itself means sometimes it happens that you're trying to doing your vCenter server installation and it just failed with the error saying that maybe this particular IPM is not installed. Maybe your, your installation has failed. So if your installation has failed, is the VPXD is the right place for me to look at it? The answer is no, because the VPXD come into the picture once your vCenter server is installed successfully, all of your vCenter services are running successfully. That's where your VPXD come into the picture to identify vCenter server specific issues. But whenever we are talking about the issues during the installation itself, where my vCenter server is not yet installed completely and I'm facing issues during the installation itself, that's where your where log first boot. So this gets really important. And this is the folder where you should be looking at it whenever you are dealing with this vCenter server specific issues. So now if you look at that, the common vCenter server logs, what are the common vCenter server logs? You do see that. So if you do see that in this particular vCenter server logs, the appliance management, this is the log directory. As I said that if you go to this particular folder where log VMware, you would be finding bunch of directories. Now how VMware has categorized their entire log structure is basically they have created these directories to have a better navigation to these logs. If you just have a one directory and having a bunch of logs of all various components, the debugging gets, gets really complicated. Though it's complicated, but it gets, it add more complexity to it. And that's where if you look at the VMware, what they have done it is basically all these common logs specific to a one specific components or service are categorized into sub directories. So if you do see that you might have, I'll be showing you this folder. So if you look at this log directory appliance management, so this is more about your appliance management service. So you know that you have a VCSA, right? vCenter server appliance management and any appliance management issues you are seeing it, maybe your WAMI UI is not coming up, right? Maybe any services are not coming up. That's where you have to go and look at this particular folder, which would be having information, which is very specific to appliance management. Then we talk about cloud VM. Now cloud VM, is, is another folder which gets another directory which gets created under that where log VMware folder and cloud VM it having a logs for allotment and distribution of resources between services. So as you know that whenever you install a vCenter server, 
obviously we it will have a resources cpu memory these are the two major resources what we provide to our vcenter server and the storage as well now this vcenter server is what a vcenter server is made of multiple vcenter server components there are multiple services which are running inside that vcenter server so now you want to see that how the resource distribution is happening across these services what the vcenter server is made up of with that's where you have to go and look at this cloud vm folder the next what we have it is a component manager so component manager is again your management service which running inside your vcenter server and managing all of the various vcenter components right so you have a, a various vcenter components various services running out there you have a you have a, your your databases there your inventory services are there your search services there right so all of this component manager is actually being handled by one service called component manager then what we have it is the reverse proxy now this reverse proxy is one of the a very key aspect of your vcenter server the whole idea of this reverse proxy is uh maybe in the coming slides i will be explaining you what the whole idea of reverse proxy but in general what happens is basically whenever you interact with the vcenter server and its specific service you just type the fqdn right you just type the fqdn or the fully qualified domain name of your vcenter server and 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 what happens is basically the vcenter server navigates you to that specific service if you remember you go and type vcenter server fqdn slash mob it actually take you to the manage object database if you type vsphere fq vcenter fqdn slash vsphere client it navigates you to your vsphere client right so the whole idea of this particular reverse proxy service is that vmware doesn't want to expose you the specific ports directly to the end user for those specific services so what vmware does it basically it will give you the url you just type that url or you you type that particular url in the browser and it will direct that request to the right services without you knowing it that which is the particular service i am interacting with it right so it gives you a lot a lot more secure way of communicating with your vcenter underlying services as a end user so that's what reverse proxy is all about it then you have a something called service control agent this is a, again a agents which are running inside your vcenter server doing a lot of other stuffs which are very specific to vcenter server the wapi endpoint is basically your api endpoint basically uh, you know you can manage your vcenter server not through the ui but through the api as well then there there is a authentication framework so you know that we have a complete psc the plot platform services controller which is responsible for all of your authentication services your licensing certificate services so that is a framework and that framework is actually handled by this particular daemon then you have a directory services directory services again we discussed that you can go and integrate your vmware identity manager you can integrate your vmware active directory to your vcenter server right so all of these directory services are being handled by one specific daemon which is your vm di di rd then you have a life cycle manager service life cycle manager so service life cycle manager takes care of making sure that all of your vcenter services are in place they are being managed and running in the right way that's where you have life cycle manager and vsphere client this is i think one of the service i think we all interact with very frequently is our vcenter ui so as when i give my vcenter fqdn in the browser it actually takes me to the vsphere client right so that is our web interface through which we interact with our vcenter services and uh, who is interacting who is providing that particular ui based navigation to us is our vsphere client right so that's our vsphere client which actually gives us all of those information then the next log file is basically where you have information about some of the other specific services for example obviously we have not discussed about auto deploy but auto deploy is one of the very important service of vcenter server because you take any environment you can't afford installing esxi manually in any infrastructure right i mean what if i have a thousands of esxi host i can't afford installing esxi host manually in all those servers and that's why we talk about providing this services over the network how do i go and install my all of those esxi servers over the network and that's where we talk about the auto deploy so auto deploy is pretty advanced service of your vcenter server but yet it yet it's very important service of your vcenter server so that's where your auto deploy services are being handled by this particular log folder so whenever you are doing any auto deploy specific troubleshooting this is the folder you should be looking at it then the next thing what we talk about is the content library so content library we have discussed in our deep dive program so in the content library if you do see that the content library give us a capability 
to to sync all of us our, our vm files or iso images and all of those directory across the various sites right so whenever you are trying to do any content library specific debugging or your content library specific issues the log folder should be content library because this is a dedicated folder taking care of your content library specific issues then what do you have it is basically you have it your em which is we call it as a esx agent manager now this esx agent manager is is one of the inbuilt service of your vcenter server which actually takes care of um, uh, doing the package installation okay so so sometimes uh, i'll give you one of the example of nsx so if you have ever worked on nsx we actually go and install nsx vibs to our esxi host now how this nsx vibs or nsx kernel modules get pushed to your every esxi host to prepare every esxi host for the nsx enabled networking that's where this agent manager plays a very important role so your nsx manager actually go and talk to this particular service of vcenter server and tell this service to go and install this vibs on every esxi host of that particular cluster basically the esx man agent manager service is one of the key service which actually takes care of installing any vibs to your esxi host and that's where this service plays a very important role the next what do you have it is basically vcha so i think vcha also we have discussed in our deep dive program so the vcenter ha service right how do i make my vcenter server highly available right and that's where we talk about your active passive and the witness node so all of these ha specific configurations are being handled by vcenter server ha service so whenever you are facing any issue which are very specific to vcha that's where you have to look for this particular folder the next service what do we have it is the image builder now image builder is one of the very critical and very important service of your vcenter server because this particular service gets bind with the auto deploy because whenever you go and try to install esxi host with your custom build right so sometimes you might have seen the issues where customer says that or maybe you might have seen those issues where people say that I, as when i take my esxi image try to boot it up it doesn't claim my network adapters it doesn't claim my scsi drives right so in that case what does that mean it means that the kernel image what you have downloaded it doesn't have a right drivers to claim those your network adapters or maybe the the other pci devices and that's where vmware recommends that you go and create your own custom image by incorporating those kernel modules or those drivers which are very specific to your hardware and for that you really need to create your own custom esxi image now how do we go and create custom esxi image we create that custom esxi image with the service called image builder that is again uh, get tightly integrated with your auto deploy but anyway whenever you're trying to create your custom image and any kind of issues you feel you see it that's where you have to look for this particular service image builder service and that is the folder for you the next what do we have it is the vpxd this is i think one of the most important service of our vcenter server if your vpxd service is not running you know that your vcenter server is not going to work right so vpxd is one of the key one of the very key and very basic service of your vcenter server and any issues very specific to vcenter server the data of the first thing you should be looking at it is your vpxd.log vpxd.log is your first log you should be looking at it whenever you are dealing with your vcenter server specific issues the next what do we have it is the v postgres so as you know that v center server is also having its own database so the v center server appliance is actually having a postgres database so any issues which is very specific to your database where you do see that my database corruptions are happening i'm trying to do some query to my v center server inventory data and my, it is not fetching that data what does that mean it means that something is wrong with your database and the the v center server is not able to make that query to the database and not fetching the right data so you know that any any issue which are very specific to my database service this is the log folder for me the v postgres so this is the folder you should be looking at it now the next what do we have it is actually the other few services so if you do see that vcenter server licensing so sometimes you might have seen that your vcenter server throws a licensing error that you cannot perform this particular feature you cannot explore this particular feature because you don't have a right license into it or sometimes even if you do have a license the vmware actually throws in some kind of licensing error so at that point of time this is the folder for you 
So go to your vCenter server, look at this particular log for subdirectory or directory CIS license. And this is gonna give you all the information about your licensing services, what is running inside your vCenter server. The next, what do we have? It is the SSO. It's a very well-known SSO service, which I think we all are aware of it. That is our single sign-on. So as soon as you log into your vCenter server during that login page itself, and it is not taking your user credentials, which means that something is wrong with your SSO integration or something is wrong with that SSO service. So if that SSO service is not working, this is something you should be looking for it because something is wrong with your PSC integration or some, maybe your lookup URL is not working because of which your token is not getting generated, right? So SAML token is not getting generated. So all of those particular issues, which you see very specific to authentication, this is the, the folder you should be looking at it, VMware secure token service. Because until unless your SSO issue is not resolved, you won't be able to log in or user will not be able to log into your vCenter server. Now the very last folder, what do we have it is VMCAD, which is certificate authority domain. Certificate is one of the very complex thing. I do see that basically, you know, there's a lot of certificate issues. You might have seen that, uh, you know, so you know that what is the idea of certificate? Certificate gives us a way of providing a secure communication between our two endpoints, right? So rather than talking in a simple language, if we talk it in an in a encrypted certificate based language, our communication becomes more secure. And that's where VMware actually gives you a way of pro integrating those certificates. So as soon as you add your ESXi host to your vCenter server, uh, a default certificates get generated and that certificate gets stored in your vCenter server database. And the certificate authority is responsible for validating this circuit, this certificate. Every time you add this ESXi host to your vCenter server or every time when the ESXi host is making that request to the vCenter server, right? So a certificate is always get validated, authenticated and who is taking care of that specific uh, secure communication is your VMCAD service, which is our certificate authority daemon. So that is a domain. So your certificate authority service is something, one of the service which is responsible for making sure that two endpoints can only talk if they have a valid certificate. The moment you do see that your certificates are expired, the communication will not work. So in those case, this is the, the, the domain you should be, this is the particular service you should be looking at it, right? So now what I'll do, I'll actually uh, log into our, our vCenter server and try to try to navigate you to those particular log folders, some of the log folders. And, and you can see that, you know, uh, how this, I mean, decoding those logs is still, it's not something very straightforward that requires a little bit more experience with the, with the technology, but you should be knowing that if this particular issue is coming, what is the first log file for me? If you're not looking at the right log file, you would be completely lost when you're trying to troubleshoot something. So what point I'm trying to make it here that first, the very first step of troubleshooting is find out which stack or which service of your vCenter server is throwing that particular error. So that you know that for this particular service, this is the right log folder for me. So you navigate to the right directory and look at the right log file and start decoding those logs. So let me uh, share my environment with you guys. So if you have interest in learning VMware more in depth, not from an administration perspective, but from the architect or consulting perspective, then join our VMware vSphere Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Program. This particular program has been highly rated by all of our learners. 100 plus careers have been transitioned successfully with our Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Deep Dive Program with the 100% placement record. Now, what are the key highlights of this program? As you could see that it's India's first job ready VMware learning program, which has a 70 hours of intense learning with the 80 plus hands-on labs, 40 plus scenarios would be presented to a learner as a challenge questions to assess their learning. We do have a mentors having a 15 years of experience and the certified professionals. You would be getting opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one in person doubt clarification session with the VMware mentor and this particular zero to hero program will also preparing learners for L3 or senior level profiles. Now we have transitioned many careers with our deep dive program and you can see some of the feedbacks right here on your screen. These are the feedbacks what we have received from all of our successful learners who has transitioned their career with us. So what are you waiting for? If you want to become VMware expert or want to master this technology, 
then call us now today on the given number or maybe drop us email on the provided email address. Thank you.